Seeing how a top FTC robotics team translates simple ideas from everyday life into a world-class robot will give you a new perspective on design that you can carry into every single season. It's one of the most effective ways to level up your own approach to a game challenge. And it's running on four little ball bearings here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As like a little, t- it's like a lazy Susan, as Americans would call them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I guess, uh, you know, at, at, at large restaurants, you have the big spinning oh, tables. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Coach Pratt, and for over a decade, I've taught students about robotics and coached several FTC teams, including national champions and Inspire Award winners. I've seen firsthand what separates a good robot from a truly great one. And the robot you're about to see uses some very clever engineering. In this episode of Robots Revealed, I'm sitting down with Team 22389 AE86, fresh off their semifinalist run and a second place design award win from the European Championships in the 2024 25 into the deep season. We're going to break down their entire robot, from their game strategy and their impressive use of carbon fiber to their 540 degree rotating turret intake and an incredibly effective elastic constrained outtake arm. Let's get into it. Here's a quick breakdown of the 2024 FTC Seasons game Into the Deep. The game is played on a 3 by 3 meter field with two alliances with two robots on each red and blue alliance respectively. Robots had to go into the center structure to collect plastic rectangular prisms and place them in the respective baskets on the corners of the field for 8 points. Or they could bring a sample to a human. This human adds a special clip to the plastic piece and then that allows the robot to hang this piece from the center bar for 10 points. In the last stages of the match, the end game, robots can hang from the bottom rung for 15 points, or grab the bottom bar, lift themselves up off the ground, and then grab the top bar and lift themselves up for 30 points. There are more complexities to the game, but that's a rough idea. Now, let's see how this robot managed those challenges. So tell me about your general strategy for the season. What was your approach? Are you a sample robot? you specimen? Can you do both? Okay, so our main strategy of this season is scoring specimen. As you can see, we have a scoring arm here that can grab the specimen from the observation zone and flip and score on the high chamber. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's our main strategy of this season. Cool. Uh, this so let's a- talk about your intake first then. How do you actually go about grabbing samples out from the submersible, so getting your game pieces to the point where you can get a clip on it. Sure. So as you can see, this is a caught intake. So normally n- powered by motors, but specifically we use servos to power it because we use the motors mainly on our tier three hang. So sorry, uh, you're pointing to a servo back here. Servos right here. Is that for your linkage to uh, drive yes. it out? Okay. Yes, we have a linear size here that pushes the whole intake out, and we have a servo here that can uh, turn a claw 540 degrees anywhere you want to grab. Grab. Uh, we do it mainly during autonomous because manual period, I think we, uh, we grab it better with uh, it being straight. And this servo here is driving it off of a belt. Is it a gear on the bottom of your turret or what is that actually making it rotate? Is it just direct connected yeah, on I it? I think it's just a uh, direct connect. Okay, yeah. Yep. Direct yes. connect. And it's running on four little ball bearings here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As like a little, t- it's like a lazy Susan, as Americans would call them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I guess, uh, you know, at, at, at large restaurants, you have the big spinning oh, tables. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's effectively the kind of idea, right? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Because you see many teams use the same I- idea and yeah. it was really effective, especially mm-hmm. during Thomas. So yeah. we thought we could do one too. Yep. Yep. And then you've got a direct drive servo here yeah. that pivots you on the Y axis. Yeah. Yep. You have an additional point there for rotation there and you have one more rotation sure, point awesome. there okay yeah so that's a lot of degrees of freedom on a small arm yep how are you making sure you can align yourself up with a game piece uh, with so many is so, it manually is there a camera vision on that or how are you uh during autonomous we have a limelight 3a right here uh yep. for autonomous mm-hmm. to make a turn but during manual we basically automatically turn it either 90 180 yep. uh 245 degrees so okay. our driver can pinpoint the the sample but yeah during so it's mostly manual then yeah but during manual you don't like to move it because we think uh moving getting us straight would uh, make us more efficient and as you can see on the claw we use yep. sports tape to add more friction yep so yep yeah and then you didn't bring your gears all the way in why did you decide to stop the teeth part way as opposed to having because after iterating our robot engineering, we found out that the driver does not actually need the claws to open that wide range. 
this might be the widest range we want the cloud yeah. to be open. So yeah. we start the scale from here. Yeah, okay. It's pretty wide range, which is easy for us to grasp the sam sample in like any positions yeah. and any degrees. Yeah. yeah, it gives you enough compliance. Yeah. 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 Okay. And do you have a transfer mechanism at this point? Uh, yeah. Does it scoop it out to the side to get it to the human player? Or how does that work? So we have a throw system where yeah. because we have this uh, rotation servo, it throws it out towards the side where it the releases it and it throws out. Ah, okay. And uh, it throws basically out and immediately comes back to this position. So, yeah. so you it, tap one button, yeah. puts it, it aside, it. drops it, brings it back. Yeah, it's a really quick one motion. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And for our high basket, we ha we basically connect these uh, samples together, where the other clown yep. on top grabs it and delivers it, delivers it to the high basket, basically. Cool. And then this. So let's talk about so. your your outtake arm then, because that's an interesting. Yeah. You've got you've got some rubber banding here for some passive resistance so that like a counterbalance you have your arm itself is not actually connected in the middle here talk about that design yeah so for those rubber bands it's actually designed for balancing the the arms yep uh yeah that, that's basically it and for this part of design we're actually kind of proud of it because it's it's honestly a very innovative and very creative design so in our first and second version of robots we actually use a straight uh, carbon boards for our scoring arm. Yes. But we found out that when there is angle between the chassis and the high chamber, it will be hard for our robot to score because there's angle. But uh, and we we and we start to think if it, we can wait make the scoring arm a little bit toted, it could be better and easier for us to score. But however, if we just make it toed like this, mm -hmm. make it solid, then it would be hard for us to score normally. Mm -hmm. So we designed this movable joint, I guess the structure yep. here, which when there is angle between the chassis and the high chamber, this arm, the physical structure itself can help us score more easily and reduce our, and also increase our uh, error tolerance. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And also here for this, this joint here between the servos and the surface. Okay. Yeah. That's a huge uh, radial gear you got running in there too, right? Yeah, this yeah. part is all also like very interesting because mm -hmm. you can see from here when it grabs the specimen from here, yep. the servos has actually rotated for 180 mm -hmm. degrees. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to score on the high chamber, yes. uh, the surface had actually only rotated for 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. This is very, it, it's good in the competition because uh, it can actually reduce the force and the stress the servos Experience. For the servo's gearbox, yeah, yeah because gearbox. you're you're distributing that load. Yeah, there's like less pressure and less force, yep. which is good. Uh, and yeah, it just makes the robot more stable. Yep. Very cool. And tell me about your linear slides. You got quite a creative routing pattern here for retraction and the uh, extension cables there. Yeah, so we we use this we, we use three motors to empower our elevators. Mm -hmm. And this is because we want an efficient uh, speed of uh, elevating the, the sliders. Yeah. And we, we use a big surface of this, of this. Oh, it's like a wheel or it's pulley. Like a wheel. Yeah, we use a big, a big wheel. Yeah. It's because uh, we want to increase the friction between the, 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 for each the motor. string, string, yeah, yeah, the string and the more, wheel. Yeah. And also we make it big is yeah. because when it spins faster, there is there's going to be force and if the the wheel is small, it will be easier for the and that's to these get motors off. driving those, yes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We yeah. have one, two and two uh, and three. Down. And one three at the back there. Oh okay. yeah. wow, that's quite a bit. Yeah. Three motors. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then what are what ratio are these running at? Uh, 15, uh, 15 to 1. Okay. Yeah, yeah, 15 to 1. And then it's not a 1 to 1 here. Obviously, you've got quite a large... What Do you know the circumference of your pulley by chance or no? Not it, exactly. Okay, it looks like it's probably 10 or 12 centimeters almost. Something like that. Yeah. Diameter. Yeah. 10, 10, yeah, 10 centimeter diameter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think this links on to our level 3 asset. Yeah. So normally people, they would have passive cuts with... Poly, uh, elevators and you've got these little yeah. passive plus. But, oh, okay. So that lifts up. These little guys hook on. But we think that to make it faster, we have yep. individual hooks that is connected to one motor. Actually, the motor is in the front, right here in the front. And oh, cool. these basically activate and then it will pull us off the ground yep. while these raise in the time and then it pulls together in one move. 
So it's really sure. fast. And yep. the passive hooks hook on. And then so this is for the level three. Yeah. This is for level yeah. two. Yes. Yeah. And you've got like a 3D printing PTFE oh, it's a, Yeah, it's a Teflon tube right here yep. that reduces friction yep. and uh, damage when we're climbing. On the edge yes. of your carbon fiber, yes. yeah, because yes. you're not going to have much strength. Our level three ascent hook is actually here. So this pair of hooks only bring us to level two. Mm -hmm. And this, this structures and also this hooks bring us to level three. Okay. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Oh, so that's what locks you in place yeah. at the end yeah. so you don't fall down. Yep. Awesome. And then... What kind of interesting things do you have for odometry pods you're using? Are you using odometry pods? Are you using a, a yeah. infrared sensor on the We're bottom? We're using Go Build the odometry pods on the bottom. Yep. So, yeah, we can actually lift it up. Okay. And you have just two of them, one for each axis. Yep. Are you using a pinpoint computer then? Yeah, there is a pinpoint computer yep. at the back of the robot. Mm -hmm. That's buried under yep, it's all It's hidden the underneath all these electronics. It's yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you probably can't see that, but yeah. I mean, super compact design. Yeah. What do you, you want to maintain the weight inside the middle of the box? Yes. So it won't. Yep. And do you have any sort of automation? So one automation obviously is Five when you eight. tap that button, it drops out to the side. Are there any automations you use uh, in Teleop to make it easier for your drivers? Uh, don't in Teleop. So in the driver control period, you press a button, obviously, and this grabs the sample, dumps it, yes. brings it back. That would be an example of, you know, an automation for a driver. What other ways are you making it easier for your driver? So, first of all, we have automatic for connection points when we want to score oh. in the high basket. So, one button plus, these two would go together and it will raise up to the degree where we can score in the high basket. And also, our linear slides will pull out to 50 and 100 with, e 100 and with each click of the button. So, basically, it makes us score much efficient. And also, for the ascent after one button is pressed, both of the sliders is going to start, it's going to come up, including this one and also for this one. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And when we press the button again, this pair of sliders is going to go down first, bring us robots above the ground. And this pair of hooks is going to bring us to level three. Mm. Yeah. Very to good. make more efficient ascent. Yeah.